Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to creating your very own Minecraft animation. Andrew here. And in the last lesson we created this uh, little animation with the trees and we also have our fire burning down here. And what we're going to do this lesson is just clean up these textures and get the scene ready to uh, start pumping out a render. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to fix is the um, black parts around these textures here. You can see on the leaves and on the grass. Um, so we're going to select the grass mesh and uh, in the attribute editor if you scroll over to the right you can see the uh, tall grass texture and um, under the color there's this little uh, little box here that I indicates that there's an incoming connection to the color and so if we click on that you'll find out that that is uh, the texture that we've applied to this and uh, at the moment you can see it looks quite blurry and uh, by default Maya applies a filter to these textures because um, if you have really large textures with lots of pixels, generally it looks quite good. But because our textures here are so small and such low resolution, um, this filter really isn't what we want to see. So to start fixing that, we're going to select the filter type to off. And you can see not much has changed. But what we need to do is we've changed the texture filter, but this viewport actually has a filter on it as well. So to change that, we have to go to shading, hardware texturing, click on the option box. And if we t change the texture filter to unfiltered and click set, then you can see these start to look a lot better. Okay, um, so that's the blurriness issue fixed. Now we want to get rid of these black areas again. I'm going to select my grass and uh, under the color, have a look at that attribute and the image name. Now if I click the folder icon, uh, these are the three images um, that Mineways gave us. We have an alpha, which is the transparency, the color, and then a mix of the color and the transparency. And we actually want to use this third one, the RGBA PNG. So we click open there, and now you can see that's gotten rid of our black areas. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with our leaves. Again, selecting this, um, click on the color connection, turn the filter type to off, and I'm going to select that RGBA. And I think we have our flowers in here need to do that as well. So filter off and RGBA, looking good. So those are our transparency issues sorted out. Um, the next thing I want to fix is the uh, filters on these other textures we have. So each of these other textures, like the grass and the sand, actually needs to be um, turned off as well. So we can just go here and turn off again turn them off for all of these textures I think there's one more off and that should do it okay I'm happy with that the next thing we need to do is have a look at these um, when we select one of these textures you can see that um, if I have a look at this log that the third thing down the ambient color is set to a middle gray and this means that this is a slider which controls how bright the texture is going to be when we render it out. And what I want to do for all of my textures again is bring that ambient color back down to black. So if I go through, can select my sand, make sure you bring this ambient color down. You don't have to do this, but it is going to make your renders look better. There we go. And now I think we're ready to have a look at our first render. So what we can do is click on the little uh, clapboard up here and render the current frame. Nice, and we can see how that's looking so far. Now is an important time to change over our rendering engine. Um, by default, Maya is using the Maya software render, and I actually want to use Mental Ray, so we can just choose that from the drop-down here in the render view. Mental Ray, and re-render again. Okay. Now, if you guys don't have the option for Mental Ray, all you need to do is go to uh, the window, settings and preferences, plugin manager, and down the bottom here there is an, an option Maya 2 MR, which is Maya 2 Men Array, and just make sure that box is loaded. Okay. So I can bring that back up again. Not looking too good at the moment, but uh, we'll definitely be fixing that up soon. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is create a water shader for this ocean. I'm going to close this and I'm going to open up the Hypershade. Now the Hypershade is the material editor uh, in 3ds Max and uh, 
you will recognize the um, the material creation in uh, Blender and Cinema 4D. So to do that in Maya, we're going to go to Window, uh, Rendering Editor, Hypershade. Okay, and by default, you can see these are our textures that we already have. So we have the grass, the leaves, and so on and so forth. So for the water, I'm going to create a new Blin material, which is a reflective material. And I'm also going to create a new water surface. So if you look at water, I can actually um, type it into here, water, and click that down here. So in my work area, you can see I have this Blin and the water. And what I want to do is I want to connect this water to the Blin as the color and both as the bump map. So what I can do is select this water, middle mouse button, drag it onto the Blin, and I want to connect it to the color, and also do it again, middle mouse drag onto the Blin, and I want to connect it as the bump map. And what the bump map is going to do is give it a bit of depth to make it appear as if it's actually three-dimensional but in reality it's just a 2D texture. Okay, from here we're going to select our blin and we're going to apply it to our ocean plane. So what I'm doing here again is selecting, middle mouse button dragging it onto our ocean plane and then if we minimize the hypershade and we zoom out, you can actually see that this water texture is applied um, although we're going to need to fix this up. Okay, so again, opening up our Hypershade, we're going to select the Blin, and this is a good time to rename it. We're going to call this Water Shader. Hit Enter. Okay, and again, you can see the color is controlled by an input, and that input is, of course, our water texture. And we want to change the number of waves to 10, and we're going to change the wave frequency to a quite a large value. I'm going to try 100 looking good and uh, back in my uh, hypershade I can select the bump which is the um, little connection that's controlling how deep it looks and this is quite a strong bump a value of 1 I'm going to change this to 0 0.05 okay and what we can do now is just uh, take a quick render of this and we can see now that's uh, not looking too bad opening back the hypershade we can select the water shader once again and under the color, following that connection, we're going to have a look at the color gain. Um, now, water isn't typically gray. We'll give that some sort of blue color. Uh, we'll try that. And again, we can take a quick render of this. Uh, I might go for something a little lighter. Again, render that out. Okay, I'm happy with that for now. And uh, we'll come back and visit that a little later. You can see our fires looking uh, quite nice there. Okay, the next step we need to do is actually start getting some lights into this scene. So what I'm going to do is uh, under the Create menu set, Lights, and I'm going to create a directional light. A directional light is a light which uh, closely mimics the sun, so it's as if light's coming from all directions. I'm going to just sort of generally rotate this into a position so as if it's sort of coming down from this angle, the sun. And you can see that there. And uh, when you actually create one of these, again, uh, like the plane, it's quite small. So what I just did, R key, and scaled that up. And then uh, just rotated that into position. I'm just going to leave it there at the center. And again, we can take a render. And it doesn't look like much has changed. Okay, but uh, we'll get there. So now what we need to do is uh, I'm going to change this color of the light to something of a subtle orange, as if it's a morning light, and we can take another render. Okay, and at this stage what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this green button which actually saves out this image, and I can have a look at this in comparison with images I render in the future. So um, again, with my light still selected, I'm going to scroll down to the, uh, the shadows tab, if it's uh, not already expanded for you. And I'm going to turn on Use Ray Trace Shadows. I'm going to take another render. And now you can see I have some basic shadows in here, which is starting to look a lot better. All right. Uh, I'm going to change this light. I think I might just rotate it up a little bit. And I can render that again. Looking a lot better. Okay. 
Under that ray trace shadow attributes, I'm going to change the light angle to 5 and the shadow rays to 10. Now what this is going to do is it's going to make the light a bit softer and we're bumping up the shadow rays to be able to uh, help render that light. And you can see these shadows are a lot softer now around the edges. Alright, getting there. The next thing I'm going to do is bump up this intensity to about 2. We'll have a look at that. Uh, it's starting to look a lot more friendly. And the last thing I'm going to do with this light is change the shadow color to a subtle blue because um, generally shadows are slightly blue tinted, especially in the morning um, because of the reflections from the sky. So I change that to blue. Nothing too dramatic. I might uh, make that a little more blue. Ah, a bit too much blue. <laughs> there we go, halfway compromise. Okay, not bad. And the last thing I'm going to do um, before I start um, rendering is adjust the, the uh, light bouncing. So this is more of a rendering thing. Uh, what this light's doing at the moment is the rays are coming in and they're just hitting a surface and lighting it up. Now in real life what would actually happen is the sun rays come in, bounce off a surface and actually bounce off and hit something else and they keep bouncing around and it brings the scene uh, a lot more light and it throws some light around the scene. So to get this sort of thing happening, it's called final gathering inside of Maya. Uh, in your program it may be called something different. However, it will be in the indirect illumination um, settings somewhere. So in Maya we access this from the render settings window just uh, next to the clapperboard up here. Uh, mental ray should be selected as your renderer. And under the indirect lighting tab we're going to turn on final gathering and there's a checkbox down here. And that should just about do it. We'll take a render, have a look at that. Okay, and you can see now that these shadows are um, a lot brighter than they were before. And they'll become even brighter when we throw in a sky. Okay, so now what I want to do is create the sky. So all I need to do is again click on the render settings tab and under indirect lighting I'm going to do uh, image based lighting and I'm going to click create. And what this is going to do is create a large sphere. We can actually sort of zoom out. We can see this big sphere around the outside of our scene and uh, we actually want to make a, uh, a little sky texture for that. And so with um, that, that um, light sphere still selected, uh, over in our attribute editor we can change the type from image file to a texture. And then under the texture option uh, we are going to make our own connection. So by clicking this we're going to use a ramp. And now what you can see has happened is that we have this ramp controlled over here on the right. So if we bring this blue color down, you can see how these colors are affecting the color of our sky. So we're not going to need the red. We can get rid of that. I might bring this green down a little bit. And uh, this could be an interesting uh, example. If you're creating a sunset or something, you could change this. Um, but I'm going to select this green color to a soft white and I might just leave that blue color for now and take another render okay so we are getting there I think what I'm gonna do now is just uh, change this blue to something a little less harsh we'll have a look at that Again, guys, this is just really playing around with your settings. That's looking a lot better now, and you can see these shadows are becoming even lighter as they're being led up by the reflections from our sky. Okay, well, I'm pretty happy how that's turned out so far. I'm going to end the lesson here, and in the last lesson, we'll look at uh, really just fixing this up, that last extra 10%, and uh, creating a render with a camera so we can uh, actually make a video out of this. All right, I'll see you guys soon.